Well, I have a very interesting thought and a subject for today's manifest telecast. And I hope that you watch all of it. As a matter of fact, let me just give you a word here. It's important that even after the teaching ends that you keep watching because we always have something special to present to you that helps keep manifest coming to you around the world. So please always remember that. Don't just cut it off when the program ends. We need you to continue to stand with us. We're thankful for many of you that have done that for 22 years now. Anyway, my subject today is why is all hell breaking loose? I know that you've heard this phrase used when people have gone through a series of attacks that just keep piling on and piling on and one after the other nonstop. And they'll say, man, hell is breaking loose. So it's kind of a phrase that we use that deals with a massive amount of trouble that seems to be coming all at once. Now, in line with the idea of hell breaking loose, let me just say something to you. One of the words that you also hear people talk about often is chaos. There is so much chaos in the world. And I did a study on the word chaos because I thought, you know, that's a very, very interesting word and found that if you take it from the Greek, you take the Greek word chaos, it comes out of the word abyss or abusos, which is the word used in Revelation 9 for the bottomless pit. Now in the bottomless pit are these very strange creatures, demonic creatures. And if you haven't seen my teaching on the Pazuzu spirit, you need to look that up on my YouTube channel. It's very fascinating. But the bottomless pit is a place that is emptiness. It's a place of darkness. And so chaos is kind of connected to that. In the book of Genesis, there was uh, Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And there's a Hebrew word there used that implies that it was perfect. And then in verse 2, darkness is upon the face of the deep uh, and the spirit of God moves upon the face of the water. So there's this chaos in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. And then God brings light out of chaos in Genesis 1 and verse 3. Another word that is often found uh, in, in Greek history or Greek mythology more than anything else, but it also is a word used in the Greek language in 2 Peter 2 and 4 for hell is the Greek word Tartarus. And uh, it is the place where the lowest part of hell in the earth where fallen angels, according to the Bible, are now bound. So all of this darkness and, uh, and just, uh, you know, death and darkness and chaos, it's all connected with that word that we find used today for chaos. Now, there's seven levels of utter chaos taking place. Number one, and the scriptures will come up on the screen on a lot of these, is the chaos that I call political chaos. And when you see the political chaos, I mean, you see nation rising against nation. You see kingdom rising against kingdom. And Jesus predicted that that's going to happen. Just political chaos. And also we could also say wars and rumors of wars are connected to political chaos. The second level of chaos is moral chaos. Now the scripture says that uh, Paul wrote that in the last days, men would give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So false teaching and seducing spirits, seducing people is connected to what I call the moral chaos, spiritual chaos. And I said spiritual, but we have political chaos, moral chaos, spiritual chaos. The Bible says uh, Paul wrote in Thessalonians, second Thessalonians, that in the last days there would come this falling away first. And the Greek word falling away, there's two words there in Greek. It's one word apostasia. And it means it can mean a revolt or a defection from the truth, which absolutely we are in globally right now. There's a fourth level of chaos. The fourth level is what I call family chaos. Jesus made a statement, a very strange statement in Matthew 10. He said there will come a time when a man's enemies and the King James says foes will be those within his own household. And you see divisions of divorce between a husband and wife. You see children that are at odds with one another. You see a lot of confusion in the family. There's a fifth level of chaos, chaos which is economic chaos. Chaos. You know, and James, if you read the entire verse, is very interesting because he says, How you rich men, for you have heaped up wealth for the last days, but it shall become a canker and be spoken against you. And so there's going to be this economic chaos in the last days. There's global chaos, chaos. And one of the verses I use when it comes to global chaos is Luke 21 and verse 25, where Jesus says in the last days there would be perplexity of nations. And one of the translations said this, that there would be such confusion that the nations would not know how to get out of the trouble that they are in. There is another level of chaos. 
I'm going to go ahead and say this because it's, it's true. And it's the stock market chaos. And that's one that, you know, the American stock market, as most of you know, affects the stock markets all the way around the world. When we rise, the others seem to do well. If we really drop, the others seem to drop. And so you read this verse in, in Luke 21, 26. So you talk about the seven levels of chaos that we see around us. Now we understand what Jesus meant when he said this, that men's hearts would fail them in the last days for fear of looking after those things which are coming to pass on the earth. Not just what they're seeing, what they are hearing. And this is why Jesus told us to take heed to what we see, take heed to what we hear, because what you hear many times can be based on not information or not revelation, but on speculation. If it's based on revelation, it comes from the Holy Spirit. If it's based on information, it's a compilation of men's knowledge. If it's based on speculation, it's based on opinion. And I watch people many times get caught up, not in the revelation of what God said, but they get caught up in the speculation of what men say. And so a lot of fear is created by uh, different things they are hearing men say. You know, there's, I mean, we got through COVID, now there's this, this weird thing called monkeypox. So it seems like you go from one thing, we get over there, oh, here comes another one. You get over there, oh, here comes another one. And, you know, it's a pig flu, it's a bird flu, uh, it's, a, it's a bat flu, it's a monkey disease. I mean, Jesus even, I'm mean, sorry, the book of Revelation even says that there would be things that would happen that would cause men's death by the beast of the field. And these are the animals. You see all these viruses, uh, sometimes diseases or viruses can come from the animal kingdom. Well, having said that, let me just get, share some things with you that are very important. One thing is this, that, that the apostle Paul has made it very, very clear already in 2 Timothy 3 and 1, know this also that in the last days, perilous times will come. Now, we don't use the word perilous much. We say troubling times will come, difficult times will come. Perilous is an older word that the old timers would use, and it was used commonly in the time when the Bible was translated. But the word perilous, I looked it up in the Greek, and it means dangerous, fierce, or reducing of strength. So what happens is this, that the chaos that's being created reduces our strength. Now, remember this, the joy of the Lord, Nehemiah 8 and 10 says this, is your strength. So if our joy is attacked by speculation and by man-made information that brings fear, then what happens is our strength is reduced. So per, when we talk about this word perilous times, we're talking about a time when people will become so physically tired. And who am I talking to now? raise your hands at home. So physically tired and so physically weak that they would be unable to stand like they want to stand or stand as they did in the earlier days. Now, I wanted to say something here and I'm saying this uh, based on uh, some word studies. If you read in uh, Matthew chapter 8, 22, where it talks about that these do two demon possessed men came toward Jesus and they were possessed by thousands of demons, the scripture says, and they were exceeding fierce. That phrase in the King James translation, exceeding fierce in the Greek is the same word, same Greek word used in 2 Timothy chapter three and one for the word perilous. So the times that we live in are gonna be treacherous. They're gonna be difficult. It's gonna be a tax to try to reduce our strength. And when you read 2 Timothy chapter three and verse one, here's what you'll discover. You can read that list from your Bible and there are 17 individual things that Paul said would be occurring in the last days that people would be experiencing. And if you, if you were to have all those things listed among those 17 things in the Bible, if you had all that listed, you would be in extreme chaos and extreme perilous times. And one of the things the Lord does when hell starts breaking loose is many times it comes in seasons. In other words, you'll have an attack, you have to endure that, but then God will give you a break. You'll have an attack and then God will give you a break. But there are times when just like with Job in Job chapter one and chapter two, the Lord allows something to come and it extends for months and months and months and months. Now that's a difficult thing to understand why, but always go to the end of the book of Job and read where when he prayed for his friends and he did the right thing and they put a sacrifice on the altar, God turned the captivity of Job 
and blessed him with twice as much in the end as he had in the beginning. So we always have to keep our eyes on the end of something and not just the beginning or the process of the beginning of an assault or an attack or an ambush. And, and we've seen those. Uh, you have to go to when it ends. And God, there's always, according to James, an end for the Lord for you in the situations that you're dealing with. I want to give you that encouraging word. So the, the big question is, why then or is hell just breaking loose the way it is? Now, there have been seasons all through world history, whether it was World War I, World War II, whether it was the Holocaust, whatever, there's been seasons in history where hell has broke loose. It just seems like all the powers of the enemy, all the principalities, all the demonic spirits are just focused in one area. I'll give you an example. If you were to live in the Ukraine right now, you would feel like that hell has broken loose in a level that you probably have never seen since the previous wars of generations ago. I mean, when we talk about in America going through tribulation, these precious people are already going through tribulation, lost their homes, their goods, their possessions, uh, deaths, murders, all this terrible things that's going on in the, in the Ukraine. And we've been on TV in the Ukraine for quite some time and we just pray for those brothers. And we also, you know, we also know that, that there are many people in Russia who are people who don't want to see this happening, but their, their voices silenced or because of the news media, they're not able to give their opinions. But anyway, we just see chaos as the bottom line, whether it's there or other parts of the world. In Revelation 12 and 12, it says this, Satan is going to one day be cast out of heaven. Now he's already been, there's three, let me, let me explain this. There's three heavens and that's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. There's the first heaven where the clouds are. That's about from the earth up 60 miles, the atmospheric heaven. There's a second heaven from the top of those clouds, atmosphere, where you leave the atmosphere of earth and you go to the sun, moon and stars. That's the second heaven. But then there is what is beyond the stars. Isaiah chapter 14 mentions this and that is the third heaven. And where the second and third begin and end is difficult for us to say because we've never been able to look out in the universe that far. God dwells in the third heaven. Angels of God are in the third heaven. Christ the high priest is in the third heaven. The second heaven is where Satan and the principalities and powers and rulers of darkness rule. And man in Genesis is given dominion on the first heaven of the, where the birds are and, and the animals are, the flying birds. So man has dominion of the first, Satan dominion of the second, God dominion of the third. Notice that God sits a whole lot higher than the devil does and man does. Think about that. Now, Satan will one day be cast out of heaven by Michael the archangel. When Satan is cast out of heaven, he comes to the earth. And I'm going to read this to you. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and you that dwell therein, but woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, knowing or because he knows he has but a short time. Now, when you begin to read in Revelation 12, where Satan comes down with great wrath, you then see the beginning of the last 42 months of the great tribulation period, where the cataclysmic judgments are going on, where Mystery Babylon is destroyed in one hour. I mean, you see this volcanoes erupting. People are dying by the hundreds of thousands or actually millions. And it's partially because Satan has come down with great wrath, knowing he has but a short time. Now, the bottom line is that woe to the earth, because that's where most people are living. Woe to the sea, because in scripture, there'll be tsunamis. There'll be a third of the ships that'll be destroyed. And by the way, the reason it's woe to the sea is those ships are not just military ships. They are cargo and freight ships carrying goods to different parts of the world. They're destroyed. One third totally wiped out. Well, what's that going to do to the food supply? Think about that. Now, Satan's anger has increased, I believe, because he understands the Bible. He can quote scripture. He proved that when he was tempting Jesus in Matthew chapter four. He quoted from Psalms 91. He didn't quote it all because if he kept quoting, it would predict how the dragon is put underneath the feet and that would have predicted his defeat. He didn't want to quote that to Jesus. He left that out, okay? But think about this. When the Holocaust took place, it was Satan's final attempt to totally annihilate the Jewish people that God has covenant with for the land of Israel and stop the process of Israel being restored as a nation because Christ could have never returned. This is a fact until Israel was first a nation again. And you can read that in the prophecies of the Old New Testament, especially the Old Testament. 
and he could never have returned until the Jewish people were in possession of the land. Now, that's a fact. Now, I know I've got friends that live in the Middle East and they're not necessarily totally happy about that, but learn to get along because the people are not going anywhere. If they have a covenant with God, how can you can't destroy a covenant that God makes? Now, you can break a covenant. You can disobey a covenant. Humans can. But the Bible said, my covenant will I not change nor alter the thing that's come out of my mouth. So there you have it. So when the Holocaust did not totally succeed in annihilating all the Jewish people, it took out one third and the book of Zechariah said a third would, would go through the fire. That means two thirds would come out. And so we know that God spared the nation of Israel. Number two, communism ruled parts of the world for 70 years and then it began to fall. And when it began to collapse, it allowed churches and the gospel to come in. And that was a second sign because Matthew 24, 14 said the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached throughout all the world. Then the end would come. And so when we went from television, black and white television to color television, to cable, to satellite, to internet, and now you can access preaching from your telephone. They're saying one day you'll have glasses on and you'll be sitting there and watch a program with your glasses. Just click a button. That's coming. It indicates to Satan that his time is running out. And just as John said in the book of Revelation, he said that when Satan comes down and he's cast out of heaven, he will come down with great wrath, knowing he has but a short time. It's interesting because if you look at the short time, it's 42 months. So God gives him 42 months. How, how long did Jesus minister? 42 months. And so the Antichrist is going to be given the same amount of time, 42 months, that Jesus Christ ministered. And then God is going to cut him off. And, and, and so there's, there's some things I could say there about except the days be short and no flesh would be saved and get into all that. But that would probably sidetrack me from my subject. And I've only got a little bit of time left. Now, I believe that if Satan has an agenda right now, and he does, it's several parts. Number one is to keep people in darkness. And the way he keeps them in darkness is to keep keeping them away from the preaching of the gospel, which the Bible says is light. The gospel of Jesus Christ is a light to mankind. Jesus is the light of the world. And the light expels the darkness. The second thing I would like to say, and I do believe this, is Satan is doing his best to kill people, to kill, steal, and destroy. That's his goal, John 10, 10. But to physically kill people before they have an opportunity of turning to the Lord and repenting. Now, mom and dad and grandma and granddad, I want you to hear me for a moment because this is very important. If you have children or grandchildren that absolutely refuse to hear the gospel, I suggest to find something, a subject that they're interested in. A lot of people are interested in life after death and what happens when you die. Life after death experience. Okay, find something that they will read that is based on scripture. Find a DVD that they will watch. Find a documentary they will watch. I'm going to tell you another thing that's just very true, and that is this. A lot of people really are interested in prophecy. Our ministry is reaching more people right now, despite attacks of the enemy that we've had. You know, I've had these things for 45 years of just attack on this, attack on that. We're used to it because it comes with the territory of being a leader in the body of Christ nowadays. But we're having the greatest results in the history of our ministry right now. I'm telling you all the way around. It's, it's, it's actually a God thing. It's amazing. But I also know something. And that is this, that the enemy, our older people who have been the prayer base of most of our churches are going to be with the Lord. But God is raising up a praying generation that understands the power of prayer. So we have to counter these attacks of hell breaking loose by a couple things. Number one is by getting in the word. And when we're in bad situations, go to the Psalms, especially the Proverbs and just feed yourself that continually. Number two is learning how to pray and pray in the spirit. Now we have world prayer at six o'clock to seven o'clock East coast time, every Thursday, live world prayer that you can join us at our live world prayer. And I have different people leading that because I'm not always there all the time, but People are praying. You can pray for one hour with us. Jesus said, could you not tarry an hour? And you can do that with us on a Thursday. The third thing, it's not just reading the Bible. It's not just prayer. But my father taught me the significance of praying in the spirit 
or what the Bible called praying in the Holy Ghost or what contemporary ministers call praying in the prayer language of the Spirit. Because Romans 8 says, we do not know what to pray for as we should, but the Spirit of God will make intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, I don't know if you've ever been heavy and burdened and you just didn't know what to pray. And you're like, oh, God, help me. Oh, you know, it's, just, it's almost like if, if you see someone go to a funeral, they just groan. They have no words for their sorrow. So we have to use these these tools, these weapons that Christ gave us. And in the last days, one of the biggest things that you have to understand, and you see this in the book of Revelation mentioned, you see this in Matthew 24 also mentioned, is being able to endure unto the end. Now, enduring to the end can mean enduring till the test is over. It can also mean enduring to the end until the coming of the Lord, or it can be enduring to the end until you leave this world. Any way you cut it, you're going to have to learn to endure. And one of the words endure can mean to bear up under a weight. All the chaos, being able to bear up under it. Now remember this, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And the fourth thing I will tell you, and I suggest this, I play music. Sometimes it's not music with words, it's just music all day long. When I'm studying and reading and preparing messages, I play music. And it, re it releases the mind, it releases the spirit, it refreshes you. And, and David played a harp and even demonic spirits departed from King Saul when David played the harp. So here's what I think you need to do. I think you need to take these things I'm telling you, jot them down, you know, replay this if you have it recorded and jot these things down and don't just talk about praying, pray. Don't just talk about fasting, fast. Don't just talk about worshiping, worship and find a good church and a good group of people to fellowship with because that's gonna be very important in these last days. I have something I wanna get in your hands. Now this is important. I'm not playing with you on this. This is important. Watch this and watch the end because I always have some special announcements at the end. God bless you. Our new offer is one of the most important prophetic teachings in the history of Manifest. Hebrew expert Bill Cloud and I teamed up on this 10-hour teaching to unlock the mysteries concealed in Israel's seven festivals. This album has 11 DVDs that are 21 30-minute lessons. They include illustrated messages and charts and pictures to enhance the details of the research. On the first DVD, I explain God's seven appointed festivals along with God's prophetic calendar. Bill Cloud then shows you a complete Passover Seder and explains the mystery of unleavened bread, unlocking its prophetic purpose, including the revelation of the Messiah. I then follow up taking you on a journey to illustrate the prophetic layers found in the Festival of First Fruits. Bill presents the fourth festival dealing with the powerful significance of Pentecost and its impact upon us today. On DVD number six, I will explain the three fall festivals and how they are yet to be fulfilled, showing how trumpets and the different shofar sounds on that day encrypt the mystery of Christ's return for His bride and the resurrection of the dead in Christ. Then I explain the biblical and ancient temple rituals of the sixth festival, Yom Kippur, and how they detail the great tribulation judgments yet to come. On DVD number nine, see Bill Cloud set up a sukkah, walking you step by step through the practical and prophetic meaning of Israel's seventh festival, also known as the Seasons of Our Joy. Among the live audience, the most talked about DVD was lesson number 10, where I examine Israel's three biblical harvest cycles that prophetically conceal the rapture, the tribulation, and the millennial kingdom through the festival harvest patterns of ancient Israel. The 11th and final DVD will stir your spirit as I reveal God's plan to restore His glory to the earth in these last days. This teaching introduces to the viewer unique Hebrew word studies, fresh biblical insight, unusual Jewish customs, and exciting prophetic truth, helping you to understand the future according to God's festival calendar. It was preached before a live audience of ministry partners, and this teaching was originally designed as a Perry Stone Bill Cloud ISO Bible course that normally is $150. However, right now you can receive the 11 DVDs as a limited time offer in an album for your donation of $75 or more. To order your set, go online at perrystone.org, call toll free 1-888-21-BREAD 
or write the ministry and send your donation of $75 or more to Perry Stone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. Now remember, when writing or calling, use offer number 11DVD101. Help keep Manifest on the air. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Folks, it's a great joy to always bring the Manifest telecast to you. I hope that you'll watch all of it. And here's the reason why. I can't tell you the many times I've gone into a city to minister and people would say, oh, we watch you all the time. We never miss a program. We didn't know you were here. And I'm thinking to myself, if you would have watched all of the program for 28 uh, minutes and 30 seconds, I come on at the end and I often tell you where I'm going to be ministering. And I, I just kind of say, well, you know, if you'd have watched the whole thing and they say, well, that's true. I cut it off right after you preach. So don't cut it off right after I preach because that, you know, you might miss a resource that you need or somewhere that uh, you may want to be. But anyway, this is uh, absolutely unbelievable. Bill Cloud and I got together. Bill is a Hebrew expert and I've studied the Hebraic thing since 1985. And we did a seven festivals of Israel teaching. And I'm going to tell you something. There was such revelation that came out of here that I didn't even know. And then revelation that God gave me as I began to research, uh, I'm talking about going to ancient documents. It's incredible. So this is uh, 11 uh, DVDs with Bill and I teaching different subjects of the seven festivals of Israel. Please get this. Uh, we're only going to make it available for, I think, one more week, this week and next week. And then we're gonna, that's, that's going to be the end of it. So get this if you can, please. And let me just also mention to all of you watching that we have... I don't know, I think it's 725,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, but we have as many, which is about 700,000 who are not subscribed, but they will come and check out things from time to time. And of course, different subjects uh, interest different people. So if you live outside of the United States and you, you get the manifest telecast, I want you to subscribe to the Perry Stone YouTube channel so that you will know when we produce new videos. We produce two new uh, YouTube videos a week along with the manifest telecast, which is also aired that way. And so this is a way that we're able to keep up with more people in more areas. I appreciate the many wonderful Christian stations that we're on. We ask you to always stand with and support the Christian stations as well, but help keep manifest on the air. If you like like the Manifest Telecast, you may want to send just a donation in as God leads you to say, Perry, this is for airtime uh, for the Manifest Telecast. I think our airtime, I may be wrong on this, is probably about $5 million a year across the uh, United States and the world where the program is aired. And so that comes, that's why resource material helps pay for that. And of course, your gifts as well. So thank you for that. Don't forget Louisville, Kentucky coming up in July. Looking forward to seeing many of our partners and friends there. God bless you. Perry Stone invites you to join him for his 2022 Israel tour. The dates are November 20th through the 29th, with an optional visit to Petra in the country of Jordan. Call 1-888-321-3629 or visit perrystone.org for more information and how to register. Seating is limited, so call today.